the pile itself seemed to have a life of its own. It spewed fire when we dug into it. The ground continued to burn. Les Robertson publicly reported that three weeks after the collapse, live fires burned and molten metal still flowed underground. You see how this debris is still smoking? That's when the fire is going to still burn it. Eight weeks later, we still got fires burning. Still toed boots is one of the biggest things. Out, still on the rubble, it's still, uh, I believe, 1,100 degrees. The guy's boots just melt within a few hours. In November 2005, physics professor Stephen Jones of Brigham Young University published a 25-page treatise on the collapse of the Twin Towers and Building 7, applying the laws of physics to the official story, from an interview on MSNBC. As we read in the FEMA report, it says here, and I put this in my paper, of course, the best hypothesis, which is the only one they looked at, the fire, has only a low probability of occurrence. Further investigation, invest, uh, analyses are needed to resolve this issue. And Professor, I agree with that. I am that. sorry that we are out of time, and I, I'm not sure that Whoa. Uh, you've uh, One other thing I want to mention okay, about... Okay, if you can hit it, uh, you can okay. hit it quickly. All right. there, there, okay, here we go. Molten metal in the basements of all three buildings. Right. And yet uh, all scientists now uh, uh, reasonably... Uh, agree that the fires were not sufficiently hot to melt the steel. So what is this molten metal? It's a direct evidence for the use of uh, high temperature explosives such as thermite. Thermite produces uh, molten iron as, a, as an end product. Okay. We appreciate your coming on, even okay. if I don't understand right. your theories. Uh, okay. We appreciate your trying to explain them. Thanks. Professor Jones barely got in his mention of thermite. An incendiary used by the military Thermite is a compound of iron oxide and aluminum, which when ignited, sustains an extreme heat reaction, creating molten iron. In just two seconds, thermite can reach temperatures over 4,500 degrees Fahrenheit, quite enough to liquefy steel. This is thermite melting the engine of a car. We know that open air fires cannot burn hot enough to melt steel, but metal had melted at the base of the towers. The second product of a thermite reaction is aluminum oxide, visible as white smoke. Was thermite used in conjunction with explosives on September 11th? Watch this very bright substance pouring from the 81st floor of the South Tower. and white smoke appeared at the base of the building. Would this be aluminum oxide, the byproduct of a thermite reaction? Appendix C of the FEMA report describes sulfur residues on the World Trade Center steel. The New York Times called this the deepest mystery of all. Sulfur slightly lowers the melting point of iron, and iron oxide and iron sulfide had formed on the surface of the structural steel. Sulfur used with thermite is called thermate, producing even faster results. <laughs>